<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, give it up for the other performers tonight and yourselves for being out here. That's nice clapping. But yay, clapping, thank you. Great, sarcastic. I've never seen anybody clap sarcastically before, but you win. Uh, like I said, my name is Nicholas Haddix, but I know what you're thinking as soon as you lay eyes on me. Holy shit, look over there. It's Harry Potter and John Lennon's unholy bastard offspring, McLovin. I know how you're thinking that, too. It's the glasses. Because every time I take them off, it's like, oh, it's just some guy. It's some guy who gives a shit. And somebody who's kind of British, who's wearing one non-rhinestone glove, whose scarf and glasses say Harry Potter, and whose jacket and one glove says is being chased away from the middle school. <laughs> Crackhead chic. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming out tonight. My name is Nicholas Addicts, and uh, I have a drinking problem. Shit, wrong room. Uh, no, no, it's true. You know you, you know you have a drinking problem when you base your living situation on bar adjacency. So I can always walk to wherever I need to go. And that's when the people are always freaked out when they see me walking because they're like, Dude, you have a car! You're going to get mugged one of these days. It's going to happen. Stop fighting it. I'm like, why are you talking like that? But they always, they always, people are always insisting on that. But the reason I always walk everywhere I go is so I don't have to drive home drunk. And basically the thing is when you're walking, you have to be really, 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 really wasted for the cops to actually see you Stop and think, you know what? This is worth the paperwork. <laughs> um, yes, yes. It's a lot of talk, a lot of back and forth after the tragedy. After the tragedy in Connecticut, I learned who's a douchebag and who to avoid like the plague. That's one of the things because you get to hear people, dirty, dirty, guns don't kill people, people kill people. Yes, but people with guns are a lot more efficient. <laughs> <laughs> just saying. Why is it that whenever somebody says just saying, they said, just said something really, really cool? But that's the thing is that if somebody's like, hey, dirty, dirty, get a tool. It, what what the hell, like, what home improvement thing can you do with a gun? I'm going to hang up some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> i got to fix this leak. <laughs> Shit. It's not working. <laughs> you know? It's, it's, a, it's an absurd world we live in. I'm kind of an awkward guy, as you might have guessed. Got my first kiss at the tender age of seven. Teen. <laughs> Seven, that's so cute. Ten, that explains a lot. <laughs> there's an awesome note because we're sitting in a car in a parking lot and we're eating Taco Bell. <laughs> and it was a rainy night. You know how rainy nights are. And then, like, Taco Bell is apparently an aphrodisiac because it was go time. <laughs> After we get done doing her thing, she's like, wow. I'm like, yeah. She's like, you need practice. I'm like, yeah. Wait, no. Gotten better since then, though. I got a girl to bed uh, last night, as a matter of fact. I love that mic, because the guy's in the audience so always like, yeah! The girl's in the audience so always like, you! No, it was kick-ass. Because yeah, I screwed up that joke. Anyway, let's see where I'm. My other, my other favorite nutty gun argument is always, uh, you need a gun to defend yourself against your government. Have you seen the toys your government spends its money on? Yeah, ask Osama bin Laden how good that whole fighting the government thing went. They just drove by his ass one night. And so I was like, and that's the thing like, with that kind of shit. Like, we were bound to find him, you know. Because he got cocky. He didn't, like, have, like, a one-bedroom somewhere in the mountains with, like, one guard. He had to have, like, a freaking castle with a moat and, like, burning the garbage and everything. And we have, like, satellites flying around all the stand countries day and night. Anything with stand. Canada could add the suffix stand to Canada and we'd start <laughs> flying fucking satellites over there. <laughs> we wouldn't be at war with Canada in two days. 
But that's the thing. We're, so we're flying over, and they're just like, doo, doo, and then this patch of dirt suddenly becomes a castle. They're like, it could be Tom Cruise's summer house. We're going to find somebody, slap a beard on them, and call it a war on terrorism victory. That's what the hell we did. <laughs> and, and he got cocky. So I guess that's the point is, I guess, uh, don't try to defend yourself against the government, you know? And it's probably possible that a lot of us are all on surveillance. Supposedly, if you say the word bomb five times in a cell phone conversation, they start a tab on you. But I mean, it's, it's impossible to track everybody. But, you know, that's how it goes. That's uh, our government for you. Kind of a, kind of a rambling, thinking person. A lot of it has to do with the fact that I drink alcohol. Uh, I got, I kind of got a thing against smoking, though. I uh, just like, because the thing is, when I, when I drink, like, everybody's like, well, drinking is worse than smoking. Derpy, derpy, derpy. But when I, like, when I go into a room full of people that are drinking, typically I don't come out smelling bad. <laughs> you know? It's true. I don't have to do my laundry because I've had a beer. Now, if I have several beers and a few shots of tequila, there may be, you know, a, you know, I may chunk it. But other than that, I don't usually have to do laundry because I'm drinking. But at the same time, I have like a, a really bad train of thought. Um, that's kind of why. That's one of the reasons why I'm personally anti-pot. Like I don't smoke weed, and I never have. I'm 24 years old. That ship has sailed. But that's the thing, one of the things about weed is that I've never known anybody to get like really super high and do anything really super profound. Some people are like, dude, 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 the greatest works of art, and yada, yada, yada. It's like, no, I've never really, like, I guess because I personally, the people I know who like, get stoned, they're like, dude, I got super high and played Skyrim all weekend, and boss. So they're like, dude, I got really high, and I, I discovered every last digit of pie. So that the circumference of every circle on Earth can now be measured to certitude. To Delta 9 <laughs> certitude. Because so I was like, dude, I got high and I baked a pie. <laughs> and then I realized that they need to start making square pie tins. So when my remedial math professor is like, pi r squared, he r not lie. <laughs> I know after the show there's gonna be like pro weed people who are gonna stop me and bitch me out because this is dented and you can't swing a dead cat without hitting somebody who has weed. <laughs> I don't know where you get a dead cat, but I digress. But they're gonna be like, dude, okay, it's not cool, man. First of all, we don't all talk like Keanu Reeves, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Second, man, do you know how hard it is to be high? And remember to do stuff? <laughs> like, I started baking a pie the other weekend, and it turned into ramen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, man. And that's really just not defending your thing. But in the defense of weed, here in Texas, we have, some, we have our priorities kind of screwed up. Because, like, a plant, it's basically it's a plant. Of all, the, of all the things you could do, it's probably the least harmful available, even I'll admit it. You don't, you don't have, like, there's an AA, there's, like, an Alcoholics Anonymous, there's no Weed Smokers Anonymous, because nobody could remember to show up on time. <laughs> Getting more bad out of the flu. But, uh, you know... There's no weed smokes in the office, and it's a plant, you know, but like a big bag of said plant that's like red and green and white and pink and purple and colors plants normally aren't. It's like a ring, your rainbow stuff that smells piney and not skunky. The kind of stuff that you like blaze it and a couple hours later you mysteriously like seen missing, you're at Walmart and there's like the pizza aisle and you can hear a choir of angels. <laughs> that kind of stuff. The good shit. A big bag of that is a felony. Meanwhile, in the state of Texas, necrophilia, the act of sleeping with my ex-girlfriend or a dead person, <laughs> is a class A misdemeanor. It is a ticket, a slap on the wrist, maybe a couple months jail time. I guess depending on how hard you had to shovel, I don't know. <laughs> so that's why... I think we need to sort of reorganize our prioritize and decriminalize weed. But that's me on my high horse for this evening.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time and give it up for the rest of the community. So we're going to be at the end of the